Camping World encourages fans to get out there and visit the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. You've got to be very careful where you're going because you might not get there. But how exactly can you go from a yogi to a king to perfectos, the old professor and pine tar? Find out next on Hall of Fame Connection. Baseball is chock full of wonderful nicknames. They say, hey kid, the splendid splinter, cool Papa Bell, Mr. October, and the Yankee Clipper. But none quite matched the official title of the King of England from 1910 to 1936. His Majesty, George V, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, and of the British dominions beyond the seas, King, Defender of the Faith, Emperor of India. Unlike the Kansas City Royals, this royal never played on a baseball diamond, but he certainly knew a thing or two about jewels. So did one of the most decorated champions in baseball history, Lawrence Peter Berra. The son of humble Italian immigrants may not have been the first monarch of the House of Windsor, but he did have a nickname that was a lot easier to remember. Yogi Berra was an 18-time All-Star and 10-time World Series champion who is widely regarded as one of the greatest catchers of all time. Yogi here is just as fine a clutch hitter as I've ever seen in the game today of baseball. In a career filled with incredible moments, one of the high points came during Game 5 of the 1956 World Series, when Berra called and caught Don Larson's perfect game. Strike three, a no-hitter, a perfect game for Don Larson. He carried me off like I was a little baby. He could hold me. He was a pretty big guy. Larson's gem remains the only perfect game in postseason history and the only no-hitter thrown in the World Series. The mitt that Berra used behind the plate that day is on exhibit at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. After his distinguished playing career, Yogi Berra found success as a manager of both the Yankees and the Mets. I always did root for the Yankees, even when I was over at the Mets. And I still root for the Mets now. I'm over here. It's good. And, uh, I don't have to move too far. You know. But a feud sparked when he was fired by another King George. George Steinbrenner III dismissed Yogi just 16 games into the 1985 season. There's no saying they hire managers to be fired. <laughs> and it would be another 14 years before the two would finally reconcile. On July 18, 1999, the Yankees celebrated Yogi Berra Day and welcomed him back to the stadium. My mother used to say the two most beautiful buildings in the world were St. Peter's in Rome and Yankee Stadium. I want to thank you all for making me feel right at home. God bless you. Thank you. As part of the pregame ceremonies, Don Larson threw out the first pitch and Yogi received it, echoing their perfect combination on the same field nearly 43 years before. Me, a kid coming from St. Louis and calling the perfect game in the World Series, that's pretty good. This is similar to the All-Star game. There's so much emotion before the game that the crowd's worn out by the time the game starts. Long run for O'Neill, and he'll get there. What a play by Paul O'Neill. Man will dig it hard, still going, still going. Great catch. I'm glad he was out there. You know, Mickey wasn't the greatest outfielder, but he could sure run like a deer. <laughs> Maybe one of the, well, he is one of the best players in all of baseball. Strike three call. Cut on a miss. That it slide away, away. Remarkably, just over two hours later, David Cohn completed a perfect game of his own with Barra and Larson looking on. Popped up and playable. Rocious. A perfect yeah. game by David Cohn. Bedlam in the Bronx on Yogi Berra. Day. Has this been a perfect day or what? It was deja vu all over again. Cohn's perfect game was the third in Yankees history. The second came just a season earlier when Cohn's teammate David Wells was perfect on May 17, 1998. Popped up right field near the line. O'Neill appears to have room. He puts it away, and David Wells has pitched a perfect game.
Thousands of young fans were in attendance to witness history that day and to celebrate Beanie Baby Day. On the day Wells toyed with the Twins hitters, this collectible Valentino Beanie Baby was given away before the game and now snuggles up with other notable ballpark artifacts in Cooperstown. The umpire behind the plate for Wells' perfect game was Tim McClelland, who 15 years earlier was part of another unforgettable moment at Yankee Stadium. With the Kansas City Royals trailing the Yankees 4-3 in the top of the ninth with two out, another Royal George, this one with the last name of Brett, came to the plate against the Yankees' ace fireman Goose Gossage. Brett smacked what appeared to be a two-run homer to give his team the lead. But Yankees manager Billy Martin approached home plate umpire Tim McClellan and called his attention to the amount of pine tar on Brett's bat. After inspecting the lumber, McClellan determined that, in fact, the pine tar exceeded the 18-inch limit allowed by the official rule. They might be going to call George Brett out. Well, hey, yes. he's out. Yes, sir. Brett is out. Look, look at this. Brett is called out for using an illegal bat and having to be forcibly restrained from hitting plate umpire Tim McClellan. And the Yankees have won the ball game four to three. Brett's wild tirade that followed is one of the most often replayed video clips in baseball history. The Royals protested the game, which American League President Lee McPhail upheld, calling for the George Brett home run to stand and for the game to be resumed from that point. 25 days later, the clubs continued the contest and the Royals won 5-4. to four proving that, as Yogi would say, it ain't over till it's over. Well, that one was over, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that sticky situation lives on at the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, where Brett's game-used bat is on display. And while everyone remembers Brett's fiery explosion out of the dugout, many have forgotten that it was Yankee skipper Billy Martin who lit the match. Billy Martin managed the Yankees to a World Series title in 1977 during a tumultuous time known around Yankee Stadium as the Bronx Zoo. Billy Martin had been a Yankee mainstay, having played for the team as an infielder in the 50s alongside Berra and Larson. They played for legendary manager Casey Stengel, the old professor, who himself was one of the most celebrated characters in baseball history. A lot of people said he gives that double talk. If he wants you to understand, he'll talk plain English. If he didn't want you to understand, that's when he give you the double talk. Stengel once said of Berra, he'd fall in a sewer and come up with a gold watch. The Yankees won a lot of gold during Stengel's time as manager, seven World Series titles in total. In all or part of seven seasons playing with the Yankees, Billy Martin served as Casey's protege. And he did so, as Yogi would say, by observing a lot just by watching. Much like Martin, Casey Stengel had been an accomplished player who learned how to manage from a renowned mentor. Stengel had a 14-year career as an outfielder and played three of those seasons for the New York Giants under manager John McGraw. After the 1924 season, Casey was asked to take part in a baseball tour of Europe organized by McGraw and Charles Comiskey, owner of the Chicago White Sox. As part of the overseas baseball expedition, a game was played at London's historic Stamford Bridge Grounds, where Casey Stengel and the other touring ballplayers met the King of England. Nearly a century later, and King George V's granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth II, sits on the throne of the United Kingdom. Well, we've managed to make the amazing journey from a yogi to a king without getting sidetracked, which isn't easy to do. Because as Yogi said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. If you want to learn more about the people, places, and artifacts in this episode, go to baseballhall.org, where you can plan your visit to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, New York, and discover your own connections to the game. Thanks for watching. For more incredible stories, check out our after show, Hall of Fame Connections Extra Innings. And don't forget to subscribe. Blagada!